Hey, this is Pastor Jerry at Crestview. Just want to thank you for joining us online this morning. It's uh, been an interesting few weeks, but uh, we just thank the Lord that He's helping us through this. So before we get started here on my message today, I'm going to be in Luke chapter 12. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for our time today. We pray, Lord, for those that are affected by this coronavirus. We pray, Lord, that you touch them and their lives. Lord, we pray for the doctors and nurses and all the ones that have lost their jobs recently, that, Lord, that, that they will make it through, that, Lord, that you will help them through this. We pray, Lord, as, as we continue these online services, that, Lord, that you will just help us through this, that, that Lord, that, that we will stay connected, that we will stay loving each other, and, Lord, also that we will find ways to reach out in our community and, and love those who are affected. Lord, we just, we just thank you for the words that you have for us today, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I was just thinking about 10 weeks ago, things were a lot different. I mean, just think, 10 weeks ago, like the middle of February, there was uh, the employment, most everyone was employed. Anyone who was looking for a job could find a job 10 weeks ago. The Dow Jones, the stock market was around 30,000, which is, I think, the highest that it's ever been. Uh, I was thinking 10 weeks ago, Cindy and I were getting reservations for our annual beach trip. As uh, April is our birthdays and our anniversary and just a, a wonderful time, and we were looking forward to, to going out on vacation and being together and, and just a lot of plans, a lot of things going on 10 weeks ago, but boy... <laughs> have things changed in 10 weeks? We now have record unemployment that now everyone is shut in their home and, and asked to stay at home just to prevent this uh, COVID-19 from spreading. There is, um, what, hundreds of thousands of cases of this going on in the United States of this COVID-19. Tens of thousands of people have died we we all know of people probably who who have this uh, have this virus and and it's it's got us all nervous. So in ten weeks, a, a lot of things have changed. I mean, here I am right here online. It's it's everything has changed. I'm not worshiping together with a church family as as we're all used to doing. Things have changed. You know, I was thinking about also about ten weeks ago. That was the start of Lent. This forty day period. Uh, moving into Easter, and one of the things that the Lord had put into my heart was to to talk about from the, the scripture from Luke 9 to Luke 19, this journey to Jerusalem. Those of you who have watched some of my messages and definitely have been part of the Crestview coming into church or watching me online know that I've preached from Luke 9 to Luke 19 quite a bit. And uh, this was the journey to Jerusalem. This is Jesus focused on headed to the cross, and this Luke 9 through 19 talks about all the things that went on between the time that he was focused on going to the cross until the time that he, he died for us. But it, within this journey to Jerusalem, there's also, if you've read through this, there's, there's a lot of parables that, that Jesus taught. And these uh, parables have, have been known, have been, people have called this the 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 parables of the gospel for the outcast. The gospel for the outcast. So, you know, I was just thinking about that, what, what another relevant set of messages to do. Talking about the outcast. There's a lot of people unemployed now. There's a lot of people looking for food. There's a, there's a lot of people that are desperate right now that weren't 10 weeks ago. So I just think that these messages need to continue. And we're going to be talking about the this gospel for the outcast. Uh, if you may remember uh, Chaplain Josh, uh, I believe it was on March the 8th, he preached about the, the story of the, the Good Samaritan, the parable of the, the Good Samaritan. That was one of the gospel of the outcast parables. And, and that happened on March 8th. That's a great message. And you can find it on Crestview Wesleyan's Facebook page. You can scroll down and that video is there. I looked at it again the other day. Just a great message. But today I'm going to be talking about another one of these parables of the outcast. And it's in Luke chapter 12. And I believe it starts in, in verse 13. So 
If you can uh, go ahead and get your Bibles and, and look to that, uh, we're going to be talking about that. Now we're going to be talking about this, this scripture today is, the, is talking about the rich farmer. This is a message that some of you have, have watched me know that I have talked about this. I've preached a little bit about this uh, on and off the last year or so. But, but today I'm really going to focus on it and, and just talk about it. And you're going to see how, how it just really applies to today. So it starts out here in Luke chapter 12. And it's a man coming to Jesus for help. He's, uh, he's got an inheritance issue. And he, he's come to Jesus to help him out with this problem. And in Luke chapter 12 verse 13, this guy comes to Jesus and says, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And Jesus quickly replied and said, Man, who appointed me judge or an arbiter between you? So there's a couple of things here that we can learn right away. One is this man really, really respected Jesus. Uh, for someone to, to go to someone else to be a judge or an arbiter between something, it is a big deal. It shows how much respect and honor this man has for Jesus. I mean, we can think in the Old Testament, those of you who have been reading the one-year chronological Bible, I mean, you think of, of Moses. Moses was a judge. He was an arbiter. Remember that? Also, we read about Solomon. He was another one. So to, to be a, to be a called to, to judge on something it is a really high honor. But, but another thing, too, here that we can see right in this beginning of this story is that, that Jesus could see right through this. He, he could see that this man was up to, up to no good. He, he could see this man's heart. See, the, all this man wanted was for Jesus to side with him. He wanted him to, to be against his brother and to side with him. He wanted the inheritance. He wanted his part. So Jesus knew that there was something up. So Jesus wouldn't, wouldn't touch it. He wouldn't touch this, this issue and he didn't want to deal with it. But he used this story here of this man coming to him to, to tell this parable. So anyway, Jesus said to them, he looked out to them and he hasn't quite got to the parable yet. He said, uh, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions, which set the stage for this parable of the rich farmer. So again, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Luke chapter 12, and we're going to look through verses 16 through 21. So I'm going to read those, and you can just follow along with me, or you can read it along with me. And it says, And he told him this parable, the ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, You have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, verse 20, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Verse 21, This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. So at first glance of this parable here, you, you just, you, you don't really see the problem, do you? Because listen, this, this man had a great crop. I mean, he had a bountiful harvest. And he would do what, what I believe anyone would do. He, he was uh, said, you know what, I've got this great harvest. I'm going to build a bigger barn. I'm going to store up my, my excess of grain. Uh, I'm, uh, I mean, he didn't do anything unethical. He didn't do anything illegal. He was just, you know what, he was just blessed. And because he was blessed, hey, I'm, I'm just going to build bigger barns and, and uh, take care of myself for a while. But if you, uh, if you read through this carefully, it, you will see that there is a fatal flaw in this man's reasoning about what he is doing here. See, he's, uh, he, he's going through thinking about only about himself. I, I believe I said this in one of my messages. See, what, what this guy thought was the Trinity was me, myself, and I. And he totally forgot the Trinity, 
which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if you read through this parable again, you see that, that he is not even thinking about God. He's not even thinking about what God would think about helping other people, helping out outcasts. It was all about himself. And, and see, you can, you can see this example perfectly because it says here, then he says, this rich farmer says, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grains. You see I and my in, in the story a whole lot. It was all about himself. It was all about selfishness. There, there was no thought of God and, and others in this picture. So, so just think about it. Who, who gave him this bumper crop? I mean, it was God that gave him this bumper crop, right? But he never considered God, and he never considered what is important to God. See, there was, there was no thought of thanking God. There was no thought of either thinking about other people. I mean, if you read through this story and you think through it, it says, well, what about other farmers? Maybe, maybe they were struggling. Maybe there were some neighbors. Maybe there were some widows. Maybe there were some orphans. Who knows? But all it was was about himself. So, you know, when I was thinking about this and, and thinking about this story and, and thinking about helping others, you know, there's, a, there's scripture in Matthew chapter 25 where actually God, Jesus, puts himself in the same place as outcasts. He considers himself like an outcast. In Matthew chapter 25, uh, verses 35, it, it, he says this. This is Jesus talking. It says, For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. And see, when we have this God mindset, thinking like Jesus thinks, we are identified with him. We are part of his kingdom. So here in, in Matthew chapter 25, Verse 34, the verse before, j just listen to this because Jesus is identifying the people who, who look after the outcast, who, who look unselfishly toward others, is people that are important to God. This is what, what it says in verse 34. It says, uh, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. So these people who look out for others, that, that look for the ones who are, who are struggling, those are the ones that, that have part in God's inheritance. They are the ones that are sheep and not the goats. Also here, if you look in, in Luke chapter 12, the, the end of this chapter here, Jesus even talks about this some more. In Luke chapter 12, verse 32, he, he says, The Father has been pleased to give you this kingdom, and since he has been pleased to give you this kingdom, what you're supposed to do is think about others. You're supposed to get rid of your possessions, sell your possessions, and give to the poor. Now that doesn't mean get rid of everything, but that means to consider the poor. Consider the outcasts. If you've got plenty, if you have been blessed by God, you should automatically have this mindset to, to, to help out other people. See, this, this was... This is an important thing to, to understand here. It's, it's having the, the mindset of Christ. When, when anything happens to us, whether we ha when we have been absolutely blessed, is to think, well, with these possessions that I have, what would Jesus do with these things? It's the first response that we should have, is thinking about him. So, so understand this. The, the problem with this parable is not the bumper crop, that the rich farmer had, or even that the farmer was rich. It was that everything that he had, he, he was considering himself. He was thinking only about himself and not even considering other people, or even more importantly, even considering God and what God would have for them in that. You know, there's something that I've said many times that probably a lot of pastors have said that is, that is so relevant for today. L listen to this. When you understand that all your resources are, are gifts freely given by God to be used for his service, you gain the right perspective not only with, with money, but with, with everything in life. Understand that everything you have, you have comes from God. So j just think about it. I, I know uh, I'm, I'm one that talks about tithing quite a bit, but, but when you give 
God the first fruit, the, the very first. When you give him, when you get your paycheck, you go and look at the top and say, you know what, the top 10% goes to God. When, when you do that, you give him the very top, the very best in the beginning, you definitely reduce the risk of making it all about yourself, making it all about the risk of loving money because it says in Scripture that the love of money is the root of all evil. So we, we, need, to, we need to understand that when we give to God first, when we give Him the first fruit first, everything else financially kind of works out in place. It's incredible. Those of us who, who have been tithing for years, it, it puts our, our life in balance. We go ahead and give God what is His first, and then afterwards, all of the other financial stuff kind of kind of falls into place. Because what happens is when you get your paycheck and you say, oh, I, I want to get this and I want to get that, you, you, you a lot of times get in trouble. Most of the time get in trouble when you do that because the priority becomes all about you as we read about this parable, the rich farmer, and not about first thinking about God and, and thinking about others. And it, it also helps you when you tithe to become a whole lot more financially responsible. Another thing, too, is that when you, when you do not follow these financial rules, you, you're doing things that's unbiblical. I mean, that's, that's just the absolute truth. It says in Proverbs 22, 7, the borrower, borrower is slave to the lender. So if you've got tons of credit card debt, if you've got big car payments, if you've got big house payments, if you're just trying to squeeze out every dime you have to, to make payments each month, I mean, you're a, you're a slave to the lender. That's what Scripture says, and it absolutely makes sense. You know, another thing that, that I've, I've noticed here, because, I mean, the world has changed in the last 10 weeks. People who, who thought they had stable jobs are now unemployed. I mean, I know of a few guys that have been working for years and years, had really, really good jobs, or are, are now on the street. They've, they've lost their jobs. And, and one of the things that, that we're finding out is they didn't have any kind of emergency fund. They didn't have, one of the things that these financial counselors just say over and over and over again is everyone needs to have at least six months of, uh, of money saved away just put away for an emergency fund, like if an appliance gives out or, or if, if your car breaks or whatever, you'll have money so you won't have to get in further debt. And, and definitely that is paying off right now. So that is something to consider that is definitely biblical, it is, to, is to save up money to have it so that you won't have to get in debt with credit cards or, or getting loans or anything like that. So, so Jesus says this in, in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, getting back to this parable, right before he started talking about the parable of the rich, rich uh, fool and the rich farmer, he says, life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. You know, isn't that the American way? Isn't that the thing that, that we just hear so much about? Just get all you want. Get all you can. Just load up. That's what commercials are all about now. It's just get more and more and more. See, that's not what the Bible teaches. That's not what Jesus is teaching here. See, richness does not consist of an abundance of possessions. Listen to this. Real life, which is truly rich, is rich toward God, not things. Let me say that again. Real life, which is truly rich, is rich towards God and not things, not possessions. You know, what I want to talk about here to close out the message, um, There, as I've said this, and we all know, I mean, this is something I don't have to really explain, but but there's people that's really, really suffering right now. Here, here's what I want to ask you to do. There's, there's some of you that, that's watching me today that, that are blessed, that, that God has helped you out, that you've been smart with your money over the years, that, that you've got a, a little nest egg, and, and you're able to help other people. That's, that's all I'm asking you to do, is the, these local restaurants here are, are struggling right now. Um, if you go and, and get takeout in, in one of these restaurants, you know what? Give them a huge tip. You know, if, you're, if your meal costs $20, give them a $20 tip. Why not? You can do that. You can, you can bless them because they're, they're really struggling right now. So just do things to, 
to help them out, to to support them. They are they are like the outcast right now. They need some they need some help. So just think of things. Maybe some neighbors. Maybe some people who who have lost their jobs. It, it just could use a little assistance, some extra groceries or something. Just just think about them. I mean, that's what this story is is all about. Is is thinking about others, about God first, and what God what what's on God's mind in considering Him. And I mean, you read through all throughout scriptures. It's it's all about helping others. It's all about mercy and love and and unselfishness and and thinking about others first. So that's just what I'm asking you to do when you when you go out to eat when you're doing things out in this community. Just consider others, help other people out. That's something that we're doing at Crestview regularly. You've been so good to us here by blessing us with the with the ties that that we're we're considering ways of helping others and. And helping our community out. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what God tells us to do. You know, it's, it's so good to to be able to do this each week. And again, we're gonna we're gonna get together soon. But y'all just hang in there. You, you know, we're gonna be careful about this, and we're not gonna be in any rush to get back in church because I don't want anybody to get sick. Y'all take care and and bless other people. You know, the thing is. What what Jesus said, the way I just want to close out the message is life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. It's all about putting God first. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time together. Lord, we thank you for your, your love for us. Lord, help us during this time that we consider others. Lord, help us during this time that we think about our finances. That, that Lord, we there's all kinds of scripture that talks about tithing that that, that Lord, it says in Malachi chapter three that 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 you're just testing us that, to give. That when we give to you, that Lord, you just open up your storehouse for us and you just bless us in ways that we cannot just imagine or believe. And Lord, we just pray that we test you on that and do that. Lord, I pray that we be generous to our community, that we love our neighbors, that that we, but Lord of all, that we first of all love you. We thank you for this time. Lord, I pray for each and every church member here. I pray for all the church family and all the ones that are watching online. Lord, just bless each and every one. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.